Hi everybody. Datatier.net version 3.0 has just been released. The biggest feature update of version 3 is you can now target .NET Framework, .NET 5, or .NET 6. This is going to be a hands-on video, but I have two quick PowerPoint slides to show you. The first is what you will need. SQL Server or SQL Server Express is what I'm using. Then you'll need Visual Studio 2019 if you want to clone datatier.net. And then we're going to use Visual Studio 2022 to create a .NET 6 WinForms application. Here's a brief overview of what we're going to cover. We're going to clone datatier.net and install the datatier.net.database on your machine. So next time you can create your own projects and save that two minutes. Then we're going to create a SQL Server database named Runner with one table called RunLog. I'm a jogger and for years I've used Excel off and on and I'll usually quit after a while. And I want to build an app that's so simple all you do is press start and press stop and maybe some notes of like it was uphill against the wind both ways or something like that. And then next we're going to create the Windows Form app because we're going to need the project folder to create your data tier. This actually uses NuGet and it uses .NET New to uh, create the datatier.net.project templates. Then we're going to build your project and execute the generated store procedures. Then we're going to build a connection string using a tool called Connection String Builder that comes in free with datatier.net. It's in the Tools folder. You might think it's worth the price of free right there. If you do, please leave a star on GitHub or, and like or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like this video, please. And then next, I am going. To, we're going to install the environment, the connection string we create in your system environment variables. And then, then we're going to build out the UI for a one form Windows uh, Forms app. We're going to install the datajuggler.win.controls NuGet package which I just updated to version 6.1 today to include a timer because last night I didn't feel like doing it first but I was that today I had some time and then we're going to add a couple of buttons and a label text box control this was actually my first NuGet package about I don't know seven years ago no 10 now it's 20 God, it's 2022 and then we're going to uh, wire up the events you know just use the well, the timer actually has the start time and end time and elapsed time as property, so I don't have to do that. And it, it displays the hours, minutes, and seconds. I don't have the timer displaying milliseconds, but I don't need that kind of precision. And then we're just going to save our run log entry, but we're going to have to do one lookup to get the last uh, run log entry, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We, well, there's, two, there's a couple of ways to do it, but we'll go ahead and get started. That was the end of PowerPoint. Just wanted to show you what we're going to cover in case you want to stick around. I am going to clone datatier.net. We can close this now. I'm going to open up Visual Studio 2019. Let me minimize SQL Server. We don't need that. Now I'm going to put this in my projects folder. My real one is in my projects slash GitHub folder and clone. Now this is going to open up in folder view, so open up the datatier.net.solution. I'll show you briefly the four projects that make up a datatier.net.datatier. If I had it to do over again, I could probably do it down to two or three, but I wrote this a long time ago, so a lot of it's uh, you know evolved over the years. And it's kind of geeky to me, but datatier.net was actually used to build datatier.net. So that's one of those kind of chicken or the egg things. But I happen to know that chicken came first because I built it. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and run this and just show you what datatier.net looks like when you first start it. As the instructions say, create a database named datatier.net.database. So we're going to do that now. I could spell, sorry. I think that's right. My vision's not very good. Okay, it looks right there. So now we're going to come over here, check this box, and as it says, we're going to click right here and execute this. So now you have datatier.net 
installed on your machine, we can proceed to step two, although we're actually going to skip step two. If you're working on a .NET Framework project, you do need to install this. For Visual Studio uh, .NET 5 and .NET 6, I actually install these uh, templates every time before I do the .NET new and do the clone because I had some problems. I tried to like just have you set it up once and then come back weeks later and you know and try to do the clone of the project templates and I found the only way to get it consistently working was just install them every time and if it's already installed it won't hurt. So we're going to go on to step three and build our connection stream. I got a new computer about five days ago and it's very fast so I named him Zippy and I'm going to use Windows authentication, build connection string, test, everything looks good and we're going to update the app.config app and finished. This message here just says we have to restart datatier.net because it can't read the app.config while it's running. And you now have datatier.net set up on your machine. So as I mentioned, it only takes a couple of minutes to do that. It's kind of easy compared to what it was before. Okay, now we are going to build a SQL Server table, our database named Runner. If I'm going kind of fast, you can always pause the video, but I'm just trying to, I've got a lot to cover, so I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but you can always replay certain sections if you need. We're going to add one table. First column is ID. It's an identity insert. I mean, it's an integer. does not allow nulls. Set primary key. And we're going to turn identity insert to yes. You don't have to have identity insert, but it's highly recommended. My current job didn't had some tables without uh, primary keys, so it does work, but it's recommended you have a primary key for your table if you can. Start time is a date time. And incidentally, date times, dates, we, we, uh, default to 1 1 if they're null. It's been on my list to have handle nullable dates, but it's been on my list for about 10 years and I still haven't done it, so I'm probably not ever going to do it. And end time is also going to be the same thing. Okay, the next column is going to be miles. I'm going to make it a decimal and 6 and 2. And then I'm going to do pace and make it the same thing. It'll be a, not really sure how exactly I'm going to format that. It would probably just minutes, hours, minutes, and something like that. Okay, and I want to keep track of miles per month. It's also going to be a decimal 6.2. I could have scripted this, but some new people, uh, new to SQL, might want to learn how to create a table, so that's the only reason I'm just doing this this way, so I'm sorry if you're wondering why I didn't script this like I do in some videos. I'm trying to keep the mindset of not everybody has been doing this for a quarter century. Uh, decimal again, 6,2. And I want to keep track of runs per month. And that's just going to be an integer, like how many times did I get out the door? And runs per year. I could figure it out from this, you know, through the data, but it's nice to just have it in one place, or at least in the, rec in the last record. And I want to keep track of consecutive days. I once ran 365 days a year, I ran over 5 miles about 4 years ago, and about 3 years ago I made it 10 months of 7 miles a day, and I got to where I couldn't walk from my bed to my bathroom, so now I take some days off. And that's going to also be an integer number. Okay, and the only other thing here I want is a little notes field, and that's just going to be... I'm not going to write a book, but I might want to leave some notes like I was sore, it was raining, etc. Or like my, or I have a couple of different runs I do, so I might want to put that in there. But that's enough for now. We're going to call this run log. I can always add a field if I need to later. All right, so we are going to close this and go over to datatier.net and create your first project. Project name, runner. 
project folder. We are going to have to open Visual Studio 2022 for this. We are going to create a new project. It's going to be a Windows Form app. If you don't have that in your recent list, just type Windows there and you should get it. If you don't have Visual Studio set up for Windows Desktop, you may have to modify, go to Control Panel and modify your Visual Studio options. But I would recommend learning WinForms even if you're a web developer because my, my job at my current work is a, I'm a WinForms developer, but I have about 20 little utilities that have made my, I need to write to just do things. Okay, and this is gonna be called Runner. And I'm gonna put this in GitHub. Flash runner. Okay, and next. Dot net six. Okay, I'm not going to do anything to this UI yet. All I want to do right now is open folder in File Explorer. And we're going to create a new folder called Data. And that is our project folder. Now, this help right here, this was written for the data tier, for the .NET Framework version. It's been on my list to update this, so I will try to get that done as soon as I can. But for now, it's similar. They're just different methods. In .NET Framework, you actually have to go uh, create your project using the Visual Studio uh, new project dialog. But with this, uh, I'm going to install it. Ignore the UI folder. It's on my list to build a Blazor and a Windows Forms uh, user interface builder, but I only have so much time. And the default project type is going to be .NET 6. You can change it if you like. And we're just going to install our data tier. I'll just show you what we just created. If you look in this folder, here's the four projects that make up your data tier. Now, we're going to hit next. We're going to add a connection to my database. Oops, can't type. This will update my databases list. And I'm going to select Runner. Hit Save and hit Save. Now, if you had a large database and you had any tables or fields you want to exclude, you can uncheck them. Like if I, if I didn't check that, that box you know, the save becomes enabled, but we're going to go ahead and do the uh, default options. So we're going to do everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and click build all. And now I'm going to execute these store procedures that have been generated. Okay. And just to show you a brief overview, here's the store procedure. So it creates one per each table. And then there's some custom methods you can do also. And I'll show you how to do one of those. I guess we'll do one just to kind of give you a demo if we have time. There's a couple of ways I can get the last record so I don't have to do it. But we'll go ahead and close this down. Just to uh, show you if you ever want to open a project. Now that we have this right here, we can just open Runner again. And it's all ready to build again. So, But we're going to close it. We don't need it open again. So... We are going now. You do need to execute these store procedures if your database schema changed. I didn't have any changes just then, that's why I didn't execute it again. All right, so now we are going to close down datatier.net and we are going to build out our little Windows form. Now, the first thing we're going to do is manage NuGet packages for solution. datajuggler.win.controls That's a new version I just published. Okay. Now what we're going to do, I will put this uh, texture, I'm going to check this project in when I'm done to GitHub, but for now I'm going to set up this form with a couple of properties and I'll show you the, where we're going to get the texture I'm going to use but auto scale font is none I want my font to be Verdana 12 because I'm my visions can't see font size 9 if we display anything I want the Windows startup position to be center screen I've wanted that for 20 years to be the default 
Microsoft hasn't ever really agreed with me. And we're just going to call this runner. And I'm just going to use text for the version number. I know how to read the, you know, I've done it before where you read the version number from the assembly info, but we're not going to do that now. And now we're going to take a short break and build an icon. If you want to see my workflow for how I build icons, I have this little, let me show you this folder in my temp folder. I have this little shoe. It's a shoe that I sell in uh, the Reillusion marketplace for iClone, but we're not going to use paint.net. We're going to use my site to get rid of the black background. So let me go to temp. We're going to say hide total less than 10, and that gets rid of the black because the total is the sum of red, green, and blue, and black is zero. So we're going to go ahead and download this image. Call this one shoe. Now we're going to go to a site called convertico.com. It's a really cool site for creating icons. So I'm going to upload our shoe.png, download our icon. I'm going to put it in our project folder, which is in GitHub Runner. And I'll just put it here at the top level. That's fine. I'll go down one. I'll go back to there, that's fine. I just need it somewhere. Okay, so now we have our icon. Well, we're gonna close this down. I am gonna set our icon for our form first. So I'm just gonna go to, I'm in the wrong place, GitHub Runner, there. And then now we're gonna set up the package icon for the executable. So if you wanna put this on the desktop, and for that, they changed this recently, so a lot of options I knew. It's kind of like, I'm not going to say the joke of when they rearranged Helen Keller's furniture when I was a kid, but that's kind of what I feel like when you get old and they change stuff on you. But let me go to, uh, where's the icon? Past it. There we go. But icon. Now this is a PNG, so we're going to use the shoe. No, it says use 128 by 128, but we're using 256. I think that'll be okay. Okay, that was the only thing I wanted to do there. And then for the background color image, I'm going to make this stretch. Oops, sorry, that jumped around on me. And we're going to set the background image to, I'm going to import... I have a textures folder. I have this black image. Let me find it. It's got some little speckles. I can't even see the speckles by here, but they're there apparently. But So now we have everything we need on our UI. I'm going to just briefly run it and make sure. Oh, there's one thing we got to do. Let me hit save. I'll show you what we got to do. See this data folder? We have to exclude this from the project. And then we're going to add a solution folder called data. And we're going to add our four projects that make up a data tier. So we're going to go to runner, data, application logic component. And luckily it starts in the right folder for the next one, so we don't have to do all that. Navigating, data gateway. object library and just to make sure everything we just did builds okay that's a good sign all right so now if I just run this app there's gonna be nothing on it but I just want to make sure our little app starts here in the center and we've got an icon okay now what we are going to do I am going to add a couple of data juggler dot win dot controls a few. Let me show you. Okay, the first one we're going to add is a button. I need to do a little styling for the way this starts off, but we're going to call this start button. I'm going to change the theme to dark. Oops, sorry, dark. I want to make this about, oh, I don't need it quite so big. Probably not even that big, like uh, 100 and They'll go a little bigger than that. Oops. Okay, 
and I just want this to be the button text of start. Alright, now the reason I like this button versus the standard uh, .NET Visual Studio button is put your mouse over this. A, it's got some styling and themes, but also it's put your mouse over it, it turns into a little hand. I don't know, I just... And we're gonna copy this. Okay, now that's something I've proven. If there's not a background color, it will not do the, watch this. I'm gonna just do a quick tangent of this video, but if I take the background image, so if I go to background image and erase this, now watch this, copy. Nope, still didn't do it. It's weird because I did a test. I was going to report that bug to Visual Studio today to Microsoft and it uh, still happens. But we'll just pretend you're not seeing that. And we'll put our little background image back. So background image. Okay, and we're going to make this the same size. And align, align middles. And that's going to be our end button. And it's going to button text of, okay. So I, we have our start and our end. Now what I want to load is our little timer. Okay. Next, we are going to add a, what's called a label text box control. This is probably the first user control I ever built. I don't know how long ago, might've been 15 years ago by now. Okay, and I am going to call this notes control. Well, actually, this will be miles. We're going to do that first. And I'll make the label text to miles. I'm going to make the label width. We don't need near that big. Okay, and I'm now going to copy this. I'm going to move these up just a little because that's a little... Uh, too uh, big, too far down. Okay, now we're gonna copy this. This is gonna be our notes control. This is why I'm wanting to build a UI designer. I think a lot of this, like, since I already know the class, I know all the property names and all that, but we'll do that another day. Uh, this is gonna be notes, so label text is going to be up here. This is going to be multi-line. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. Okay, now one thing we're going to have to do, and I think I have either a bug in my control or it's in Visual Studio, but I'm going to change, <coughs> excuse me, change the label text align to top right and then if I save it and build it's gonna it's gonna change that I think let's see okay it didn't but I've seen it uh, there we go we're gonna, have to, we're gonna fix that by going to the constructor of this now here's something you may or may not want to do but I have a package called regionizer I'm a region alcoholic hi Corby okay I don't go to meetings though but uh, I'm going to format the document. If you want to learn how to uh, modify C Sharp documents, this is a good open source package for you to learn how to do that. If you want to extend Visual Studio, I just released a new version for Visual Studio 2022. This is the main form for this app. Oops. Now, I am going to rename form one to main form. What I usually do. There. Okay, and now here's one other thing I like about Regionizer, and it's on my list to make a new video of this about this. But if I turn on auto commenting and hit my mouse here and hit Control Shift, it types that, and I'll explain that in another video. But that's something I've always liked. I used to work somewhere that you couldn't turn in code without comments, so I wrote it just to save me a lot of time. Okay, and this is going to be properties. So we can store some properties on our little form here. And the next thing we need is our save button. Okay, that's taking a long time to copy. 
And again, it got bigger than it should, but I don't know why that's happening, but make same size both. I'm gonna align right. Okay, and I'm gonna just this the save button. And the button text is going to be save. Okay, and now the only other thing I want is a little status label. So I'll just get the standard control. I'm going to dock this to the bottom. Turn auto size off. Make the back color transparent. Web transparent. Status label. Four colors going to be lemon chiffon. I can now spell that after all these years. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger. And I want the text align of this to be, uh, that's fine. Okay. And I want the text to actually be empty until we're going to write some messages there. Now the only other thing I want to do is I, before I did the regionizer, I forgot to do this. We're going to add a methods region. And if you want to follow, I forgot to add this to the what you will need part, but if you want to follow along, I'm going to add a method called init, and I want to make it a void, and here's a little shortcut. If I turn it to event and back, I don't have to type anything. And I'm going to add a method called init. And notice it types that comment there because I have some code that looks for method names like that. And here I am just going to type... Uh, let me see what this, sorry, see what this control, that's a notes control. I'm a little sleepy. Notes control dot label text align equals content alignment dot top right. There we go. Let's plug this resets on build. Okay, so that should, if I just run this, and that is actually, let me go to here, let me rename this. Yes, okay. I'm just gonna do a quick run and make sure we're all still running. Okay, I'm not gonna start it yet. Now we did skip one step. I told you about Connection String Builder, and I'll show you briefly where it's at. So if I go to GitHub, Actually, projects is the one we just cloned. Datatier.net, datatier.net again, tools. Here's Connection String Builder if you want to open this up and build it. I already have a shortcut on my desktop, so I'll show it to you. I'm going to type my server name again. Oops. Database name is runner, Windows authentication, build connection string, test and cop. What just happened? Zippy SQL Express. Looking at why this didn't work. I've actually never seen that not work. I... Oh, computers are so picky. Okay, sorry, I spelling error. Computers do what you tell it, not what you want. It's one of the first rules of computer science. Okay, so now we're going to go edit, sysdit, edit the system environment, <coughs> excuse me, environment variables. I already had this here last night, so pretend you didn't see that. I'm going to call the variable name runner connection string, but I'm going to abbreviate connection string, and I'm going to paste in our value. But I want to copy this back to my clipboard and hit OK. So now we have our connection string set up. Now, we are going to add some references here. Those three are all we need. Now here what we're going to do in application logic component dot open the connection folder. Up here it says change name to the name of your environment variable. I'm going to paste in our environment variable name. 
So now whenever this runs, it will look up your system environment variable. I have a class called environment variable helper in datajuggler.net. 10.net and .5 and .6, but it's just a way to, or 10.5 and .6, not the .net framework version. Okay, so now that that's set up, we can actually have our app do some things. So let's, we can write our save method. So we are gonna do a little bit of a, we're gonna wire up our UI a little bit, so, okay. Okay, we are gonna add a couple of buttons. That's a little, let's see, it's a little better. It's designed to be pretty. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. They're painting the house. I live in a duplex and they're painting the top unit and it's like the fumes are killing me even though it's upstairs, but I, they painted the hallway and I can still tell there's crap coming in. Okay, we're gonna wire up our click event. Here's another thing I like about Regionizer. If I come over here, Format Selection, the Events region doesn't exist, so we'll, let me undo on that. Let me put in my Events region. Now we'll try that again. Okay, so here's my event, and it kinda, you know, it's not perfect, but it puts some common in there. So, we're gonna add a couple of properties. But I'll go ahead, let me do my end click. All, all the button clicks events, get those out of the way, and then we'll just, okay. Do the same thing, format selection. And we're gonna do our save button. And format selection. Now I was thinking of adding this. I just thought of a new feature for regionizer because I know some people do not like regions. I was thinking I could, I could still keep everything in alphabetical order like this. Like if you look at your, those events are in alphabetical order and if we added another method, now that is actually messed up because Visual Studio 2015 and on has a bug that doesn't like regions, but that worked in Visual Studio 2013 and they won't fix it. That's another story. Okay, so we have everything we need. We are ready to add some properties. So actually, we're just gonna do our events because I, before when I did this, I had to have like start time and end time and all that as local variables. But since I added this to the control, this has all that for us. So our little click event just needs, what did I call that, display timer? That needs to be renamed, so give me one second. And this is gonna be, we'll go with display timer. Apply dot start. And that sets the start time and starts the timer. Start. Oops. And then we'll do our uh, end event. Oh, stop. Sorry. Okay. All right, and that sets the end time. And then from there, we can get to the elapsed time. Save, but now we have everything we need for the save. So we are going to save our first record using datatier.net. So to do that, I'm gonna add a few using statements up here. I realize there are new ways to globally do this, but we're only using one form, so it doesn't really matter. We're just going to say using data gateway, using application logic component. Yeah, we're going to need that. And using object library, dot business objects. And we want using data juggler, dot win, dot controls, and using data juggler, dot win, dot controls dot enumerations because that gives us the status of our timer there's a status that has uh, not started started and stopped there's a pause but that's not been implemented yet because pausing is a little harder than stopping and starting 
And last one is using datajuggler.ultimatehelper, which is installed with datajuggler.win.control. So I use that in almost everything. And I'll show you why as the video goes along. So here's what we're going to do. We need to create a run log. Here's why I like the auto commenting. I just hit control shift and it types that in. You don't have to do that if you don't have regionizer installed. Now we're going to set run log dot start time equals display timer dot start time. I'll just put a note for all these. Oh, sorry, it's not a method. Run log dot end time display timer dot end time. Run log dot miles equals miles control dot double. I have an int value, but I don't have. Okay, we're gonna parse this, so it's gonna be numeric helper dot parse double. That's part of data juggler dot ultimate helper. We're gonna put in miles control dot text. The next argument is the default value, which is zero, and the error value is also going to be zero if it doesn't parse. I could put negative one if I wanted to, but I want that to be a zero. And run log dot pace equals display timer dot elapsed dot total minutes divided by run log dot miles. Okay. Now, there's a few properties where I want to get, which is the from the last run, which obviously the very first time it runs, there won't be a last run. But we're going to create a custom method in datatier.net to find the run log. And I'll show you how we do that now. And I will state I have not tested this in the .NET 6 version, so you are watching brand new code. Something uh, could go wrong. I'm going to run, uh, I have to open up datatier.net again. Okay, now that we have, this is actually the solution again. They do that to me. I don't know why, I wish that wasn't in my recent list like that. Okay, so we now have datatier.net. Let me run it again. Usually I use the executable version, but for this video I'll use the Visual Studio. I'm going to open a project. We are going to add a method. Method type is find. We are going to do a... By the way, the no parameter is the one thing that is on my to-do list, but for now, just for this for this interface anyway. So we're going to use a single field as the parameter field. And I want to... Okay, we're not going to do this. I, I wanted to do it, but... Well, all right, we'll just do ID. That's fine. Um, yes, we still want to do this. The reason there, it's saying that's the primary key, but the reason why I want to go ahead and do this, we're going to say find... This is going to be, it tries to fill in this for you, which it makes more sense if it's like find by last name or something. But for this, I'm going to change the name, which you're allowed to do here. So I'm going to call this find last run. Procedure name is going to be run log dot find last run. Parameter. Okay, I'm going to... That's fine. We're going to just leave it like that. We're not going to actually be using this in the uh, store procedure, but that's okay. Property name, find by... Property name is going to be find last run. And we only want one row. It's going to have a custom... The order by is going to be a single field. It's going to be ID, and it's going to be in descending order. So, this is going to...
find the last run where ID equals ID, which is what we're not going to want, but we're going to change that, and I'll show you how we do it. Next, confirm update. This is going to update your project. Good, that all still works. Now, we're going to modify this a little bit. Here, what it does is, if this procedure name already existed, because you, know, you could be doing an update, then it would... Uh, it does the drop. Now, what we want to sign, we're going to take out this part though. You see where it says where ID equals add ID. We're still going to have to pass something in. We can pass in zero, but that's the only thing we're going to kind of fake out to get our last uh, run. And I'll show you how that works. So we are going to install the procedure. Now, the first option is copy the procedure and you go over to SQL Server Management Studio or, you know, if you were working somewhere, you might have to give it to a DBA, but for this, it's probably going to be just you. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this. So the store procedure has been installed to your SQL Server. So if I close that, now you will see our methods here has that little one. This shows that we've already created one. So what I'm going to do I'll go ahead and go over here to we can close down datatier.net. I'll show you in SQL Server. Let me refresh our store procedures. Now we have a find last run. Okay, so now it's going to be this is all the fields in our table. That's all we have to do. And I need to take control shift R to make this right here update. So that's all we're doing. So I'm not going to do any alters here, but I just wanted to show you the store procedure we created to find the last run. This right here, this ID parameter is not needed, but I haven't, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't written the code that handles um, a no parameter use case, but we can still modify the procedure generated. It saves us a lot of time. So now we have everything we need to come over here in our little app we're building. We are going to say last, I'll put a little comment, attempt to find the last run because it won't exist obviously the first time. So we're going to call this run log last run equals, first we're going to create an instance of the gateway. Sorry. We'll do this up here. Gateway gateway equals I could type new gateway, hit control shift, and that comment was typed in. And now, this gateway dot find last run. Oh, I've got to pass in an ID, it doesn't really matter. It's not used. If last if no helper dot exists, ah, last run. Now, I could have typed last run is not equal to null. The reason why I do this is, one, I can usually type that faster than not equal to null because of IntelliSense. But also, if you hit comma, I can have up to five uh, objects. So you don't have to say object one not equal to null, object two, etc. Hit control shift and type in that comment. So that's why I use the auto commenting. And I'm, I started to make a new video of that today, but I'm going to make a video of that tomorrow if I have time. Okay, so now we want to set a few more properties of our run log. So now we're going to say run log dot uh, miles per month. First, what we got to do is see if the last run dot month equals date time dot now. So I'm going to get a local up here that just gives me the current time. Actually, date time now equals date time dot now. Okay, so now we have that. So I can say if now dot day, I mean month, is not equal to last run dot month, last run dot start time dot month. if a new month. Then in this case, for a new month, it's going to be uh, run log dot miles per month equals run log dot miles. OK, 
this a new month. New month resets. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for year in just a second. But there's one other one we want, and that's run log dot runs per month equals one. That's the first one. Here, here we're gonna have to add this, so it's just gonna be run log dot miles per month equals last run dot miles per month plus run log dot miles add this miles and run log dot runs per month equals last run dot runs per month plus one okay there's other ways to write that but that's good all right now we're going to do the same check that we did up here for a month for a year. So let me quickly do some copy and paste and say if a new year, if a new year, this is why I got the variable up there now because date time dot now is kind of expensive, but it wouldn't matter for this. But uh, well, that year, I could do a uh, search and replace here, but um. We're almost done at this point. Okay. It runs per year. Okay, and new year. Resets. Which I'll get to test this in about two days, so less than that now. Actually, it's already the third, yeah, very soon. Okay, and this is going to be miles per year. So I'm saying I could have done search and replace, but we don't have much to do. Okay, miles per year, runs per year, got that. Pace, I've already, yeah, I already did that up there. Okay, and then notes. So we need, I'll do this up here. Run log dot notes equals notes control dot text. I think that is about all we need. So now we are ready to save. Let me make sure. Okay, get rid of that. So now we are ready to save. So we are going to say bool saved equals gateway dot save run log ref run log. Here, we'll just change our little message. Good job, or something like that, just to, you ran. Okay, show a saved message. Control shift, types in that comment there. That's, it's funny, for years I didn't know I could be on another tab. I always had to have this window visible, but as long as that's checked and this is here, I can, uh, that auto commenting still works. And next, I'll even show you how to set up a uh, custom dictionary if anybody wants to see it. Let me know in the comments below. But that'll be another video. And status label dot text equals, oops, Houston, we have a problem. They failed. Okay, and that is enough for us to test and see what I didn't do. Can't promise all this is going to work, but I don't build rockets for a reason. Everything I build, I have edit undo, and no one gets hurt if something doesn't work. All right, so we will go ahead and just start it and see if it works. So we're going to click start, see if my little... Uh, Timer works. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm not going to let it run too long, but we'll just let it run for 10 seconds while I get a sip of beer. Okay, and we will go ahead and click end right at 15 seconds. And I am going to top the, I should put something like finished. I need to put that, I'll put a finished label here in a second, but we're going to just see if we saved anything. And I usually run 6.5 miles, but I have another one that's longer, a couple of others. Oh, that still doesn't display the text align <coughs> of this, but 
I'm not going to worry about it. And I'll just say flash was here because I ran six and a half miles in 15 seconds. Oops, Houston, we have a problem. I'll tell you why that didn't work. I already I realized what it was. I just thought of that. Okay. So I thought I was pushing my luck, having everything work that well. What I forgot to do was when I created the gateway, I have to put in our connection name. So I realized it right after. So let's go to save. First, I want to put, display my label. So we're going to say status label dot text equals run finished, something like that. And I want to change this when we start just to kind of run started. All right. So now in our save, here's what I forgot to do. I need to set the connection name, so that's just going to be application logic component, like it's spell dot connection dot connection dot name. Okay, I think I might be able to just say connection dot name. Let me see. It may not like that, but oh, it's going to be connection dot connection. Can't spell. Hang on. All right, I'll hit the whole path. I was trying to see if I can do a shortcut, but it doesn't like it. I could do a uh, component dot connection dot connection dot name. I can't. Why can't I spell there? Okay, so that is going to put that runner connection string. And let's try that one more time. I'm sorry. I was man. I thought I was doing good there for a second, but okay. Minimize this again. Start run started we'll stop it at 10 seconds this time okay and this time I'm, I was tired so I only ran two miles and I'll again say flash was here save yay okay so let's go ahead and that's the first time so let's go look and see what I left out as far as saving because I might not have put in everything. So let's go look at our table. Okay, we have our start time and our end time. Now we're going to fake it out that it's the second day. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say update run log. Here's an easy way to set uh, the date one day behind. If you just say set start time equals start time minus one, that will set the day. End time equals end time minus one. And let's execute that. We only have one record. So now if I say select star from run log, okay, so now we have our little pace, but you notice. Oh, I just realized what I didn't do. I'll tell you what I did. I know exactly what I did. This is computers doing what you tell it, not what you want again. So we'll pretend. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just keep going. But what I didn't do, I mean, like code. I did this last night too, but I, I thought I had fixed it. But okay, let me go to our save event. Here's what I, <coughs> here's what I did. I put all this on that else, but if this run log didn't exist, None of this got set. So what I need to do, put else. is not a last run. So these properties right here for, oops, the reset ones. Okay, so it's a, no no data so just this run and that is going to be the same as this one with the months top okay so there's not a last run so that's what i that was the one thing i messed up so i can do a quick update query and fix it so i don't have to do anything so i can just say update run log set miles per year equals miles. I think that'll do it. 
Okay, and I can also do uh, miles per month equals miles. I could have done this all at once, so sorry. But, and then, uh, let me, what else are we missing here? Okay. Really, I thought we just, update. okay, we need to say update run logs at miles per month equals, I'll just type it in, oh, sorry. Uh, miles per month is, what was my value there, two. And miles per year, Sorry, I'm getting a little sleepy, folks. I, I don't do as well when I get sleepy. And, uh, okay. And consecutive days is currently one. Yeah. Okay. So now if I do that, let's see, is there anything? I don't understand. Update run log. Runs per month. We haven't done runs per month. Okay. Runs per month equals one and runs per year. Although I'm starting kind of late in the year, but it's not really too accurate. And that is all we need. Okay, so sorry I kind of had everything messed up, but I think now that the next time we run this, and you see that that is now back one day behind, it's on the 29th. So now if we run our little app again, we should have everything work. So we'll just start it again, quick 10 seconds, or five. Or... Okay, and I'll just put a run of like six miles, and I'll put a note. Flash was here. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's see if our logic for all this. Okay, runs per month two, runs per year two. Ah, we're not doing consecutive days. So we're gonna temporarily delete. Okay, and we gotta put in our consecutive days logic. So we'll handle that and that'll be the end of the video. And All right, so what we wanna do, if last run, Oh, dot start time dot day of year equals uh, run log dot start time dot day of year minus one. First, I need to check and see if the year is the same, but if the years change, so we'll we'll just do that really quickly. If the years are the same. If last run dot start time dot year equals run log dot start time dot year same year. Else, if the years are different, then it's going to be run log dot consecutive days equals zero. And then here uh, we need to check. If last run dot day of year, uh, start time dot day of year equals run log dot start time dot day of year minus one, I'll put that in a. I'm gonna show I'm doing that right. If that, no, it's this one minus one, sorry, did it backwards there. Last run dot start time dot day of year minus one. So if this is the next day, All right? That looks right to me because that should be the day before. So it'll be run log dot consecutive days equals last run dot consecutive days plus one. Set the new value. Else, reset. Ah, what did I do? Sorry. Yeah. 
Let's reset. Okay. And then here what I need is, if it's not found down in our little else, run log dot consecutive days equals one. So, okay, I think that is everything. Now we're gonna try to, let me look at our database again, see what. I want, select star from run log. Okay, I think we are ready to run. Let's see if this one does it again. The consecutive days should go to two, if everything works out. All right, starting. And miles. I'm not putting any validation in here because I'm the only user or the user is, you know, if you have to make it user proof for the general public, you have to do a lot more testing. But when the developer is going to be running it, it's not that big a deal. And we'll do one last. Flash was here. Save good. Okay. So now let's just look at our select star from run log. Runs per month is two. Runs per year. Miles per month. Miles per year consecutive days is still not working so we're gonna to have to delete we're gonna to have to debug that so we'll that's gonna be three now let's try one more time we'll debug it this time I usually I'll try it once and if I'm wrong then I'll go actually spend the time to debug it so let me stop all right so let's find out why we'll just put a breakpoint here and see why this didn't save and I'll figure it out as we go through it. Okay, start. Let's go a few seconds. Okay, miles is gonna be eight. Let's say, I don't even have, to, notes are optional, so. Okay, so let's see. So it is the same year. Start time dot day of year is 363. Run log dot start time dot day of year is 360. Oh, that needs to be plus one. Okay, computers do what you tell it. That was it. Okay, sorry about that. That's why I had to come in here and debug that. And now if we close this. Let me go to, we'll look at this one more time. And our consecutive days is set, and I didn't put a note there, so that all looks good. I am going to go ahead and add this to uh, GitHub. To, let me runner, and I'll just say a simple app to keep track of run times. And I'll have to go to Visual Studio and add a readme later, but I'll... Uh, do that later, but I just want to make sure your solution contains files outside of the folder. What is outside of the folder? Hang on. Oh, let me go look. Hang on. Let's see what's outside. I'm trying to think. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's uh, telling me that. I don't think I added any files unless it's the... Uh, Shoe. No, we've already got it there. I'm going to go ahead and just say OK, and I'll figure this out, what's missing. I'll clone it and see. So we'll just try that again. And So let me do a git. thought we just did that. Apparently, uh, let me re-enter my credentials, apparently. Sorry. OK, runner, a simple app to keep track of run times and I'll figure out what's missing later so create and push yes save okay all right well thanks for watching everybody I think we have a pretty good little app there hopefully you have, if you have any questions please uh, let me know I don't claim that was a, a very uh, polished you know little app there it was just something and we'll put that in let's see if runner is there Okay, so here is that. I'm going to come over here and add a readme and all that. But if you want to come over here to datatier.net 
and leave a star, please uh, do. And if you like it, please tell someone else about it. Because that's my hardest thing to do is I have, you know, marketing open source code is really hard. But to me, this is just a better approach than Entity Framework because I like store procedures. And I'm pretty good at Lambda expressions after years and years, but store procedures are just simpler, especially when you look at things like gateway.find or, you know, and you pass in an ID, that's just easier than explaining to a new programmer how, uh, you know, Lambda expressions work. Cause that's, you know, it's not hard, but for someone new, it could be a little bit, you know, difficult to understand. All right. Well, good night, everybody.